Hi everybody. The purpose of this video is to start section 3 of chapter 4 and here we are going to talk about the multiplication rules of probability. In this video we will be talking about um, statistical independence and also the idea of a multi-stage experiment. In, uh, in, our, in our next video, we will talk about statistical dependent events and bring apart the notion of conditional probability. And if I have time, I will, I will also include the fundamental counting principle, or I actually may include that in a third video, depending upon how this goes. So our first thing that we need to talk about is the idea of a multi-stage experiment. And newsflash, a multi-stage experiment is an experiment with more than one step. For example, flipping a coin twice is a multi-stage experiment. Uh, rolling a die twice is a multi-stage experiment. You could also even argue that rolling two die at the two dice at the same time is also a multi-stage experiment, depending on, um, depending upon how you observe the outcome. Um, another multi-stage experiment would be right down here, drawing a colored ball from a container replacing that ball and then drawing it again. And right now we're gonna focus on those types of experiments. We call that a multi-stage stage experiment with, re with replacement where all the outcomes are always replaced. This example right here is one and also the repeated die toss or the repeated coin flip. They are also the exact same things as a multi-stage experiment with replacement. Obviously, you're not replacing anything, but in every single stage, all the outcomes are the same. And if that is the case, that it turns out that each event or each stage in that experiment is independent of every other stage. And that is the notion of statistical, statistical independence. Say that three times fast. Independence basically means, in terms of probability, that one event has absolutely no effect on the other event. Any multi-stage experiment with replacement is an example. As I mentioned, the coin flip and the die toss. Uh, multiple coin flips, multiple die toss are also examples. Before we continue, let's talk about mutually exclusive uh, events because sometimes there's some confusion between mutual exclusivity and independence. Mutually exclusive events basically never have any common outcomes. As a consequence, the event, those events could not occur in the exact same trial because they don't have any common outcomes. If you know that one outcome is in one event, you know for a fact it's not in the other event. So the occurrence of one event of event E tells you something about event F. Now, independent events, basically, uh, if, if two events are independent, that means that the occurrence of one event tells you absolutely nothing about the occurrence of the other events. So let's go ahead and think about this. If we know two events are mutually exclusive, the occurrence of one event tells you everything that you need to know about the other event. It's not going to happen. They are not independent. And that is the point that I want to bring across. Mutually exclusive events cannot be independent because by virtue of the fact that they're mutually exclusive, the occurrence of one event tells you something about the other event. And that's an important thing to bring about. Bring about. Now, if you have two events that are independent, then we have a very straightforward multiplication rule for them. The, uh, um, the probability, if, if E and F are two independent events, then the probability of E and F, i.e. the probability of their intersection, that's what we have here, which is also known in math world as the joint probability, is nothing more than the, than the product of the two individual probabilities. Okay, so if you have event E and if you have event F, and if you want to compute their joint probability, the probability of the intersection is nothing more than the product of the two, of the two individual probabilities. Okay, and before we get to that, let's just go over a couple of homework problems relative to independence, or that that you might see. And here's one of them. Consider if the following events are independent or not. Okay, the first event here is that Jeff buys a Porsche. Okay, the next one is that Hannah buys a Harley Davidson Sportster. 
probably safe to say that these are two independent events, particularly if you can assume that Jeff and Hannah don't know each other. Event number two, Bob forgot to set his alarm. I've been known to do that from time to time. Bob does not show up for class. These are likely dependent class, dependent events. The, the event of Bob show, not showing up for class is dependent is probably dependent upon uh, Bob not setting his alarm. So those are two dependent events. The last one, Jose graduates summa cum laude, um, or graduates college summa cum laude. Anna has a glass of wine with dinner. Chances are Jose graduating summa cum laude has absolutely nothing to do with Anna having a glass of wine, particularly if they don't know each other. So um, it's safe to say that um, those two events are independent. Okay, now here is our first example that deals with the with, with, that deals with the multiplication rule of independent events. And before we continue, let me just go ahead and remind you of what that rule is. The probability of E and F, which is also known as the joint probability of E and F, is nothing more than the probability of E times the probability of f. Okay, so here we have our here we have our problem. Suppose at the same time you toss one fair coin and one fair die. What is the probability of rolling a 6 and flipping a heads? So we can call e rolling a 6. So e is rolling a 6. If that's the case, the probability of e as I hope you all know right now is going to be equal to one six. The probability f here is flipping is is flipping a coin and getting a heads. The probability of f is going to be equal to one half. Therefore, the probability of e and f is going to be equal to the probability of e times the probability of f which is going to be 1 6 times 1 half, which is equal to 1 12th. So if you can determine if the events are independent, it's pretty straightforward. Next one, what is the probability of rolling an even number and tails? Well, once again, in this case, E is going to be the outcome of 2, 4, and 6. I think we all can safely deduce that the probability of E is going to be equal to one half. F is basically rolling a tail. And the probability of F is also one half. Okay, so in this case, the probability of E and F is going to be equal to the probability of E times the probability of F, which will be one half times one half, which is equal to one fourth. And that is all I have for this particular video. Stay tuned for a follow-on video where we will talk about dependent events or multi-stage experiments without replacements. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. This is Bob Boyle, signing off.